My brothers and sisters, at this time, I invite anyone who can to move out to the front steps of the church where we will begin by blessing the Easter fire and blessing the Easter candle and then process back in.
Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, let us pray. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All by his holy may Christ the Lord guard us and Amen. Amen. of Christ dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds we'll get it going again in a minute <laughs> this is if you hadn't picked up a candle please do so at this time I'll come to you. Okay.
we go. Justin, did, do you want to close this? Give it to him to close. Then get your candles. The light of Christ of Christ makes me to God. Light your candles. Let's... All right. Go. Okay. Okay, go. The light of Christ makes me to God. Peter, you'll come over here with me.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who was, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling to ransom a slave. You gave away your son. Oh, 
truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. 
Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. Our liturgical readings this evening are found in the hymnals at number 901. Our readings this evening begin in your hymnals as the third reading from Exodus chapter 14. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, Split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the, the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With the Egyptians sounded the, ret the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses said, <clears throat> Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let 
Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. In a thing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, had shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place where you made your seed, O oh Lord. The sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever. And us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day. For what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth, and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, 
For a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should ne never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall the, be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but for a moment. You, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O oh Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, 
your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My, wor my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. shall draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You shall draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. 
Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw waters joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. Get the candle light. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, 
Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll, the ba- who will roll back the stone for us for the entrance to, from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Death and resurrection, death and rising, it signals something new and profound. But in a very real way, we have to struggle with some tendencies. One of them is that we need to get past, one of the tendencies we need to get past is that crust, that layers of barnacles that weigh down our understandings and our view of what has happened in the world and in us in the death and resurrection of Christ in the Easter event. For instance, I still see it, not so often on the internet, but still people publish old articles. Someone speaks of the origin of the word Easter as if its origin if you go far back enough, disproves the celebration that it has pagan religious origins and therefore is a non-Christian celebration. The primary source for explaining the word Easter is from a saint, the Venerable Bede, who was born around 672 AD and died in 735. According to Bede, the English term Easter does relate to Estra, a Teutonic godness. Bede is a Christian, firm and true, who was describing the simple origins of the local word used for this great Christian solemnity. By the time of St. Bede, this ancient religion had already passed away. Bede notes that this Esther Monath was the equivalent to us of the month of April. In other words, the word Easter simply is and has been by the time the church came to the British shores, the word for spring. But the issue of Easter having pagan roots begins and ends with that observation. For Easter is not called Easter everywhere. Much of the world takes its cue for naming this feast of all feasts from its biblical origins, the Passover. We even call this Easter candle the Paschal candle. The great celebration of God freeing the Israelites and making them a people peculiarly his own finds its ultimate fulfillment in Christ, in his death and resurrection. The Greek word pascha, and hence the Latin form pascha, is derived from the Hebrew pesach, meaning the festival of the Passover. In all Romance languages, the name of Easter festival is derived from that same Latin word. For instance, in Spanish, Easter is La Pascua. English is strange. (laughs) 
This celebration of Easter is so wonderful that even today many are tempted to suspect it's got to be anything other than it is. That it comes from any place other than the historically confirmed roots of its origin. But here we are, continuing a feast that not only echoes through the centuries long before the 700s, but fulfills our hearts so wonderfully that some find it easier to make up something rather than accept the events given. The wonderful message and experience, the wonderful truth we behold, the dying and rising of Jesus, our dying and rising in Christ, from death to eternal life. Ongoing life, rising up, so hard to imagine. And then even harder to grasp what that calls us to rising is the case. Rising seems unnatural to come back from the dead. Popular entertainment gives us monsters galore who seem to be alive, the undead, who are the main characters, even heroes of their franchises. For instance, there have been many series for books, television shows, movies, and video games featuring things like vampires or zombies and more than a few of them present them as just trying to get along in the world. I used this illustration years ago, and my brother-in-law still smiles sometimes and says he remembers my homily on zombies. <laughs> but since you haven't heard it yet. We just need to remember the original sense of these creatures. Going back centuries and formed in the Christian West, the point was that they were indeed monsters. The talks were told as horror stories. They were, in fact, morality plays. The moral was that the result of seeking eternal life without the eternal God meant taking life from others. There is something unnatural about living on past the time of death. And there is an inherent sense among us that death, death might be for the better. The fictitious vampires live by continuing to deal out death to others, drinking their blood. Zombies continually feed on the flesh of the living. Some people extend their lives and propagate at the expense of others. Basically, living by a blasphemous inversion of Christ giving us his body and blood. If we turn these morality tales upside down, as is done in the popular stories of today, these monsters turned heroes make it seem okay to rise by stepping on others. It was okay to get a new organ by kidnapping a homeless person and taking theirs. It is okay to promise longer life if we but consume the lives of the small, the silent, the unimportant, and the powerless. Such stories originating in Christian cultures touch on the instinctive tension between our wanting to live and our knowing that in this world the dead coming back is unnatural. It is a concern. And then Jesus rose. The fearful reality of something more than this life hits home. Death to life has entered our experience, but not in fear. Well, perhaps at first. The resurrection appearances are filled with dread as well as joy. God working does that. But the resurrection of Jesus means God is answering our basic sense that life can be more than this brief time everyone has. That God answers even more than that. Our desire for fullness, forgiveness, love, a desire to be for completeness and peace. A recognition 
that we're meant for something more. In Christ, in the resurrection, life after death is not unnatural, it is supernatural. The Christian message is that eternal life, as God plans it, changes things. And because of that, our morality is changed. Paul explains how baptism enables Christians to participate in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Engulfed in the waters of baptism, they were buried with him in death as they emerged from the water. They rose with him into new life. Paul's real intent in drawing these lines of comparison between the death and resurrection of Jesus and the baptism and new life of the Christians is ethical exhortation. He encourages them to set aside their old manner of living and take on the new life of holiness. Their old enslaved selves must be crucified, just as death had no power over the resurrected Christ, so sin should have no power over the baptized Christian. And baptism is over and over again the returning theme for our readings and our prayers that we've just heard, even from the Old Testament. Even though this year St. Joan of Arc has no baptisms this weekend, baptism is about this, and this is about baptism, our baptism tonight. It's about dying and rising in Christ, who has died and risen. In fact, in truth, in fact, in truth, and not just as a biological life extended. From death to eternal life, those joining the Catholic Church here this evening have already been baptized, and they along with us know that everything we do here tonight and at every Mass is an immersion into and an outpouring of the graces that come from Christ redeeming, dying, and rising. In prayers for those who are in the process of dying, we ask Jesus to let the person share in his glory for our loved one has shared in his suffering and death. That sharing refers to the person having been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so, an expectation, a hope, a waiting for the resurrection is justified. Lent and Easter allow us to plunge ourselves into the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. Lent and Easter are ways we enflesh this new life concretely, incarnationally. Lent has been a time of desert, a time of discipline, and Lent always seems easier to make tangible. At this point today, we remember to make Easter tangible. Glorified life tangible. Though we set aside now our Lenten penances, we can still ask ourselves how we have done, how we have grown. For all of the Lenten practices are ultimately regular Christian practices. During Lent, we might emphasize the penitential aspect of it. But prayer is not punishment. It is the regular conversation with our Lord and Savior. And we do that in good times as well. We do that in joy. We do that at Easter. What do we take from Lent and continue into Easter? What bad habits or sins have been conquered? How much closer are we to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? How ready are we to celebrate the Easter season in prayer and in loving both Christ and, in al and also in joining Christ in his love for all his creatures? As we step away from Lent, we can ask ourselves what we asked at the beginning of Lent. As we asked, where do I want to be by Easter? We can ask ourselves, what, where we might want to be with God, his church, and all humanity 
come Pentecost and move in that direction. My brothers and sisters, please stand. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of all our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope in this litany of the saints. Sing 
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I ask you to pick up your candle again. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now with our Lenten observance concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do and all his works I do. and all his empty promises. I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness for our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus the Lord for eternal life. Amen. You may now blow out your candles again. Hold that. Step back.
We invite forward you, who already won with us in baptism, are to be received into full communion in the Catholic Church with your sponsors. Raina Johnson Jones. Matthew Jones. Riley White. Raina, Matthew, Riley, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. And so go ahead at this time and express your faith. I believe and confess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has... Oh, I get to say that to each of you individually. Yeah. Okay. Riley, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of the family. Reina, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full community with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Matthew, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that the unit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. My brothers and sisters, three new Catholics. Welcome. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. The Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Rita, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. With your spirit. Peace be with you. Philip Neary. Philip Neary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, three new confirmed members of the church. I invite you to go back to your places and join everyone as we uh, have the universal prayers. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the universal church, that with our Pope and bishops we may proclaim the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of this world, that the kingdom of the risen Lord may spread through all societies and all cultures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized at this time, that freed from the slavery of sin, they will live the new life of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the worshiping community of St. Joan of Arc, that we will share the joyous news of the resurrection with all those we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those members of our community that have been received into the Catholic faith tonight, that they may grow deeper in the true faith as we welcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they will return to life with him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your presence and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Bless, be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all those people who have gone before us, that they may rest in a sleep for peace. Grant them, O oh Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Go ahead. Go ahead. To us also, your servants, who those teenagers, hope in your abandoned mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, 
Admit us, beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I...
has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. Give praise to the Lord.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank everyone who make our liturgies possible and beautiful. A lot of work has been done, even outside in the grounds of the church. We have a reception after this, our Easter Vigil Mass, in the gymnasium. Please, everyone come over and welcome our new Catholics here at St. Joan of Arc. I recognize, I've only been here, now this is my second uh, uh, Easter Vigil here, but I already recognize many who who uh, joined the church last year. I don't know how many of you, the Easter Vigil is your anniversary into the church, but we all can give thanks to Christ who welcomes us. Uh, that invitation to go to the gymnasium includes anyone who's visiting and just passing through. My brothers and sisters, all my prayers and happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are ce celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Please join in singing our final hymn, number 400 in your hymnal, The Day of Resurrection, number 400.